All right, so the blue cloth, um, as I mentioned earlier, we will start with a um, dark sea blue. And because I want it to be a bit more intense, I'll add just a tiny bit of turquoise. Now the, the turquoise that you use, that's the model color. Yeah. Right. <clears throat> and really that, that, you've just used like a little tip of it, right, to, to bring that up? Yeah. Okay. It looks more intense while it's wet and when it's dry it will uh, tone down quite a bit. Okay. It, again, it, it's like seeing the, the amount that you put on the brush because I mean, if I, I think previously if I was base coating an area like that, I, I wouldn't be as as careful with how much was on there. I'd just think, okay, so it, it's that first base coat. It's a nice thin layer and I just slam it in on the palette <laughs> and just start slapping it everywhere. But I, th I think it, um, like like you showed with the skull, it's a lot more crucial for something like the lighter colors, but it's still just as important with the other colors. You, yeah. You're setting that neat, clean foundation to work from. Would, would you agree with that? Yeah, definitely. Um, I think it's quite good to, to never overload your brush really with, with too much paint because, for example, we have already blended this here and if you would just have color running out and you right, could not right. control that 100%, that would be quite annoying. Not doing a, a, a Jack Crow special with the wash, right? <laughs> I was actually just about to ask when you when you mentioned uh, about the turquoise whether you were going to start it off with the dark sea blue and a tip of black maybe so that when you layered it on it was slightly easier. Um, but but it's it's really nice the color that comes through just from adding that that tip of turquoise. I never would have thought of to do it that way. And I think it's it's nice because you still have the color is very close to the the tones that we've used, but it's still just a bit more vibrant. Right. And again, this, this is coming back to what you said about atmosphere. Yeah. So, uh, on that cloak, because I know from looking at the figure, you actually have quite a large uh, join on that shoulder pad. You must have done milliput to get it that smooth, right? <laughs> no, it was all the, also on that side, all the um, PVA glue that we used for that. And of course, you're going to notice if you watch the video early. <laughs> I said it's quite a bit more muted once it's dry. Mm. No, but it's nice. It, it fits in with the figure. Um, for you guys at home, actually, for a bit of back, uh, um, background information, I, I was really pushing for Ben to do purple. Um, as I, I just thought it would be like a nice, nice dark color to do, but but that looks really good. And I think also the the uh, color combination of having this here and and that nice dark blue and having that gold border here. Right. That, I think that will just be a, a very nice combination. Also, it's a nice contrast with all that red armor. And of course, having things like um, like like a good good natural hair brush, you, covering those large areas, you you, you tend to get a, a smoother coat, right? Yeah, yeah. Especially for me, uh, at least for for my uh, taste and experience, um, especially uh, brushes with long bristles like the uh, Winston Newtons. Right. Um, they are very good for that because you just store a lot of paint in there. Mm. Um, I mean, it's not impossible to get a smooth coat with like synthetic like that. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. But yeah, it's sure. just it, it, little, but, little things to help you achieve yeah. that, that that look. Plus, usually the um, the bristles are a bit more um, like sturdy, uh, like harder. Yep. In in synthetic, mm -hmm. and I think for getting especially like a smooth blending on, uh, like smooth surfaces like that, it's very good to do that with a natural right. natural hairbrush. Um. Actually, we will just 
do a loader brush to get um, our highlights done. We don't want to go too bright, so I'm mixing um, a lighter color, same as we did actually on the uh, on the black cloak. So I'm not going for pure white, otherwise it would end up looking like one metal. Um, I'm also adding a bit more turquoise, um, so it's not that gray. Right, because when you when you add something like white to a paint, it's it's essentially uh, killing the the pigment in it, right? You're you're drawing out that color. So if you'd have added, yeah, as you said, if you add the white, it goes more gray. So you're you're adding the brighter blue, mm -hmm. right, to to combat that effect. Yeah. And you can see both colors are actually quite thin, but that's nice to to not leave any hard borders. Is that dry? That was slightly different to say how you you've done before with the loaded brush, right? Yeah, because the colors were quite a bit thinner. Right. So uh, it was more like a <laughs> a loaded glazing so, so say it's oh wow well, no dude you, you have to give me like do that one more time with a little bit of a bit of a bit of a action replay man okay. on that because that's <laughs> so thinner thinner colors uh both for also the the highlight color right um So the way you did did the brush stroke, it was like you you you're moving it from side to side as you're doing it because if you'd have come too far down, you would have pulled that yeah. highlight color in. Yeah, it would all, have looked all a bit over orange, would, right? Yeah, and you would end up having like a, just a not blended all mid color right. surface. I really like that. Plus, because the color is so thin, we don't even really see a a, a border to. I was about to say as well, and I suppose you you might feel a bit more confident trying that first because it's it's not as thick yeah right and you can correct it a lot more easy right that is fantastic man. thanks and yeah we'll just uh, continue <laughs> <on. laughs> yeah whatever <laughs> <laughs> yeah. we'll just continue like that uh, wrinkle and wrinkle That is really, really nice. I'm loving that. I, I, I really can't wait to, um, for that for this video to come out now, so I can actually sit and 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 practice that. Yeah, I think it will be quite a nice technique for for the people also to to pick that up with the, just doing it thinner. And also, that's actually a good point on that you have to really put an put an eye on your uh, on the consistency of your paint because it's actually just the same thing just with thinner paints and a little bit more water in the back of the brush right and you can get quite nice transitions with that because there are some painters out there who who just work solely with glazes right yeah and, and it's uh you they achieve just some some really wonderful effects, especially on armor plates. Um, you, you just see all these like really, it's, it's like having loads of transitions going on, you know, it's like all these different, different effects. That 
is so good. Really is cool. Um, a little bit thicker paint to draw on the highlights here, uh, highlights here on the just in the holes and at the very edge here. I think it's really nice also to see that the level of contrast really determines the, the material because this here, those are just the very same colors that we've used here, but it looks not as if it would be the same material. Right. Something um, actually we were, we were speaking of earlier, um, especially like I used to find when painting an area like that, um, I could often pick up like like little bits of fluff and, and it would come out on the brush. Mm -hmm. um, and actually we, uh, we were talking earlier about the uh, type of paper you use to um, draw your brush out on. Now you were using these little... Um, I suppose they're like the little pocket napkins, yeah, that yeah. like for like like little po disposable pocket handkerchiefs. Uh, why is it that you use those as opposed to say like regular paper that you would find in your bathroom? Um, I think uh, the the paper is quite nice because it's a little uh, bit more durable. Uh, it does not lose the the fibers, mm -hmm. so you reduce like the the amount of uh, little flakes that you have in there, like tiny bits of fiber from the paper. They right. could be really annoying, especially on like a large surface like that. If your workspace is not somewhat clean, then it can really, really drive you crazy during the during the paint job. You're right. It's something that frustrates me no end um, I'm doing that. And it, again, we like it, I think we, we said this in the, the, the earlier videos about the paper that you use for your wet palette, if you've got the wrong paper, you're going to be bringing up fibers from that paper. Yeah, and that and it has the same effect. It it gets into the paint. Um, and and it doesn't necessarily have to be those those uh, handkerchiefs. You can use things like like kitchen paper, right? That's yeah. quite good stuff. Yeah, it's uh... it's just Ben managed to find a wet palette that was exactly the same size. As <laughs> those disposable uh, handkerchiefs. Yeah, that that's quite quite actually quite useful. Uh, I, because I also use them in the pallet to store the the water. Mm -hmm. um, so it's quite good that they're in the same. So just very quickly, it looks like you're going slightly brighter now on, on the highest edges. Mm, yeah, but because the um, here the wrinkles are like just like a bit a bit uh, softer. They are not that dramatic, right. and here they are okay. just stronger. So I'm also going for a stronger highlight. Mm -hmm. Um, but they will still soft out here, like the, the middle area a bit to get the, the highlight a bit broader. Mm -hmm. yeah. And again, look out for the future painting, um, painting Buddha product, Buddha breath, uh, where Ben will be, um, yeah, Ben's very, breath very in the busily, can. <laughs> busily uh, uh, breathing into cans and pressurizing them for you guys at home. Yeah, it's a good set with the uh, strain of the bottle beard and. The <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right. <laughs> Ah uh, no, there was uh, <laughs> there was uh, just a tiny bit of fiber because we talked about the the nasty fiber. Of course, of course, <laughs> yeah, okay, so, of course. So, uh, so Murphy so. thought, well, that's actually something I haven't done this week, so I might just uh, I start, might start just, doing that. Yeah. yeah. So I just picked up a tiny bit of, of fiber. So even there, where the the cloth, it's I mean, it's technically in a recess, right? But you're still giving it those points of light because you have those sharp edges. Yeah, also I wanted to really um, 
be separate from the background and therefore I need like little highlights to right to make it really stand, stand mm, up because e even the, the one like on on your right I, I wouldn't have thought to do because it, it just doesn't look, doesn't look too much but seeing that as you've done it it looks natural it's a bit too thick Okay, so so if you make a mistake like that, just quickly clean your brush with some water and then then do yeah, the feathering just, and pull it. Yeah, I took some of, some of the thin base color to actually do ah, that okay. because it was quite a, quite a bit too too bright. And now with that mixture that I have from pulling it over the surface, I so blending the highlight here to the inner side. Right. I don't know if you guys are picking this up on the microphone, but first my stomach rumbled and then Ben's followed suit afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's like a secret communication. <laughs> yeah, perhaps perhaps they're secretly working on a painting project <laughs> together and they just this is how they communicate. So would you say this, like, for example, you've, you've used the, the dark sea blue and then the turquoise, the, the brighter saturation color and white for this. Is there any um, advice you can give on how to select um, the colors you would use for, say, for when, with a different color? So say if it was like a green and, and you had like the, the darker green, how would you go about choosing the right green that, mm. that, you, that you mix for the lighter one? Is it really just down down to, to a bit of practice, maybe just just mixing it on your palette? Yeah, plus I think maybe a, a good tip is actually beside the practice is that um, you just mix the, uh, the 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 brighter color that you that you're adding to the mix. Uh, just mix that with a bit of black and see if it turns out somewhat similar to to right. the dark color. Okay. Uh, because then the tones should use, but uh, it uh, should okay, work together. Yeah. But um, like um, sometimes it's also interesting to ha have a, the color changing a bit with the glazes. So it's if you want to achieve a silk-like effect, for example, that is quite nice to do that with a different tone. Right. For example, uh, I did that on the uh, Twisted Game Miniature, um, sort of Lancelot. I did that with uh, uh, quite an intense green and used purple for the shadows. Right, so uh, that g gave a very nice silky effect. Also, using like different colors for the highlights with a bit more yellow, so that look makes it look more uh, like. I don't know. There's this uh, silk that changes the color. I don't know the the, the name. So yeah, I think um, it, it's nice to vary in the in the tones. Like I did in the jacket, for, uh, the twisted miniature, the Sir Lancelot. Uh, I shaded a quite an intense green with some purple uh, mm -hmm. to get that pearlescent effect of silk. So um, yeah, here we will just uh, continue with the highlights like that and um, then we're back for the uh, glazes of the tank brown to enrich the blue still a bit. Okay. Awesome. Skulls. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so um, as you can see, I've um, just finished the, the highlights here also on the on the upper part. Um, also, just took a little bit of black and just got like the clean line here back around the, the little uh, embroidered circle. And as I said, I still want um, to make this uh, transition on the blue pop a bit and we'll do that with um, tank brown finally the two together tank brown and dark sea blue um, make sure it's quite thin the glaze that you're going to work with because um, the um, tank brown is quite an intensive color <coughs> so we'll just um, put it in the shadows Uh, 
and at, at this stage, would, would you say it's like it's really crucial to make sure that you, you don't overload the brush? Otherwise, you'd, you, you'd just be like filling up too much of the gap and you're going to get those, those tight pool marks. Yeah. Yeah, it's important to not overload the brush and uh, to really work rather on the, th on the thin side and rather do it three times than uh, ruining it with one because actually the, the transition is already quite nice we just want to make it a little bit stronger and also give the color a little bit more interest and just uh, just coming back to when you tidied up the black on the on the uh, for the the, the gold stitching that you're going to do. Mm -hmm. um, it's really just a case of a, of a very steady hand and just taking it slowly, right? Yeah. Um, I think there's not, not really a special trick. You just right. have to... If you're not really having a steady hand, just uh, try to really rest something like the little finger on the miniature. Like, mm -hmm. I always try to get like a good grip and with just having this here as a point where I can rest my hand. Right. So also up here. So you're you're just you're you're finding those areas, those those deep shadow areas, and and putting the glazes there. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's not really always like here it's like I was just about to say somewhere like there is where I'd, I'd find it tricky and I, I probably would have been like nah it, it doesn't need it you know yeah but sometimes it's just good to add a little bit of a darker color there to get to get a stronger flow in the, in the cloth but maybe uh, and but you you might not do it like say three times yeah you just do it the once yeah, yeah in the, the one deeper time. areas you yeah, yeah. accentuate it more shallow yeah but you can see it already here, it's not yeah. as strong as, as here. It's 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 a really um, almost bizarre concept to me that, that you're using uh, the tank brown to glaze in the shadows, but it, it works. You know, it looks good. Yeah, the nice thing is that it just adds a lot of... Uh, actually, it adds a lot to the color because you have that uh, contrast with the red-brown and it's just nice how the colors add up because they're translucent. Right. And if and if you wanted to, you you could paint that cloak just using glazes. Yeah. Uh, if if that was the style that you were going for. I've tried to to paint a cloak that way before, and it, I mean it, it. It's a really it's a nice effect. It takes a little while. Yeah. Um, but it's almost like quite therapeutic when you're doing it on a cloak yeah, yeah. because you've got that nice big surface and, and all those folds. I, th I think to do it on, say, if you were doing glazes to paint that, that corn symbol on the top might drive you insane. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, true. But for something especially that soft, it's really nice mm -hmm. to do it with, with glazes. And like, like say, for like a wizard's cloak or something blowing yeah. in the wind, it's, it's really nice. Um, I think that's already okay for, for the level of contrast that I was looking for. Um, I think once we add the uh, gold um, embroidery here, that will also make a lot of difference because it's just a strong color contrast. So you, you don't want to go too far now and that it looks weird with the gold. You, you're going to do the gold and then, then because see, you put it on your yeah, palette, yeah. you can check. And yeah, then see and I see if it needs some adjustment in the end. But so again, it's the same thing like with doing only three layers of the glaze. You just don't want to take it, keep it like a little bit further back, yeah. do, do the area that's right next to it, and then you can see if it works. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'm starting again with a bit of the uh, Japanese uniform in black. Um, not as much black as uh, we did use for the for the armor. On the gold part. At uh, at Ben's apartment uh, yesterday, uh, we were discussing what what could be involved in a in a box set of uh, comets colors. Um, I'm fairly certain Japanese uniform might make an appearance. Yeah, Japanese uniform is a, is a very nice color. As 
as we talked earlier about the the color that the nice thing here is it covers quite well even on on black um, mm. foundation and, right and and we were doing the we, we were painting some Ben was showing me how to paint some flames and he he pulled out like quite a bright red a very bright orange and then the Japanese uniform and I then asked so don't you want like a brighter yellow he's like no 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 and and it 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 really looked um, almost like something more realistic. Um, it looked less like you see the the hot rod flames. Yeah. You see on cars, which I'm I'm not knocking. If if you want it to look like that, cool. But but it had like a slightly more realistic fire effect mm -hmm. having that kind of muted yellow. I mean. I think my version looks better in in the blue green. Yeah, uh, <laughs> but, you know, just yeah. just putting the that blue out green there. flames are just uh, <laughs> they're just a lot nicer than actually these the the uh, red classic ones. It looks quite a lot more sinister. We uh, painted the um, uh, what's the name? Legion of the Dam. Le Legion of the Dam. Yeah, and uh, yeah, yeah, with with blue flames, they look. Pretty pretty cool. It it was um it was slightly odd how how uh the the color you picked it was like almost green. If you'd have showed that to me and said what color do you think this is, I would have I would have said green. I mean I can see that there's blue in it, mm -hmm. um but then when when you you showed me how to paint it and, and on top of the black and then you stand back and look at it, it's like it's it's blue. You know it's it's like this this really creepy blue, um. Uh, uh, how to describe it? Yeah, it's it, it's nice, really nice. Yeah, like it, like a petrol blue, but once you highlight it, it turns like a, a bit more turquoise. Mm -hmm. And the effect is really nice. We did that with the scruffy green from uh, Game Color, or you could also use the from the new Game Search, uh colors the uh, Cabalite green. So those are quite good tones for if you want to create some magic flames. So just giving that a second layer, so we have a. Even code of color. Uh, we were reading some of the comments that you guys have put uh, on YouTube, and one of the questions was to Ben, what uh, do you look for when you're choosing a brush? Mm. What, what qualities do you think? Okay, this this is good for me. Yeah. So, for for both wet blending and loaded brush, it's nice to have longer bristles than very short ones because you can just store more paint or more water, so it makes it easy to pull it over the larger surface. Sure. So, actually, the length of the bristles are uh, is quite important, and um, also for me, like the tip, I think the tip of the brush is just the main thing that needs to be just really precise. Um, and if possible, try try go to a store to buy one. Don't don't do what I did, buy one online, and then then go and have a private paint lesson with someone and discover that the tip isn't that good. <laughs> <laughs> um, if if you some art stores, I've been told you you go in and they they often have like a little cup of water and a, and a piece of paper. You can actually check the tip and make sure it's make sure it's good. Yeah. Yeah. Especially if you if you're buying something like the the Winds Renews in Series Seven because it, it they are, they are money, more but, expensive. Yeah. But as, as you I think you mentioned in one of the other videos, it's the if you treat them well, they will last you a while. Definitely longer than any synthetic brush, and <laughs> yeah, also longer than most of the other brushes. Also the um, the um, Da Vinci Master Series is a really nice, very good. Uh, Brush is a little bit cheaper than the Winston Newton. Oh, really? Yeah, like one or two euro cheaper, but ah, okay. not a huge difference. But right. Um. The uh, speaking of a good tip, we need a good tip for uh for this part here because, um. Different to these parts here, we want to make it look like it's um. Stitched on, so you have single. Um, more like lines on the uh, surface to, to structure it and also like just smaller highlights. Um, I want to try to achieve that just with lines and not the real blending before. So I, I'm just mixing a highlight color from um, our base tone with a bit of white. And I'm going to 
we need to when we place the highlights here on those we need to just check where we painted the highlights actually on the on the blue so that right. matches so you, you can use that as a reference yeah because you you wouldn't want to i mean you you could just paint it straight gold and it would look fine if you were um sitting on the table with, with the rest of your figures however just just to take this that little bit further is to try and represent the fact that it's it's stitched gold on, onto a piece of cloth rather than like a solid a solid bit of gold that's yeah, yeah. somehow rippling in the wind <laughs> yeah and i think it just makes uh, like a very nice difference also in material because it's then it's just obvious that it's not just hammered on there and uh, trying to to put that cloth down so um i think here also if you decided to paint your figures in in real metal um to paint something like this then in, uh, in non-metal is quite a nice little touch that you could do i would, got the question on facebook by uh, by one of our supporters that he asked okay uh, well do you actually combine non-metal and real metal in the in figures and i said i actually try to to not do it, it's uh, one case I would do it is just if I have something like that that is stitched on actually not real metal, um, I would would do that in in non metal. Unless you're uh, unless you're Banshee and uh, you've got, have you seen the the Iron Man? Yeah. Figure he'd do it. Oh, it's so good. I mean, but mi mind wreck, but <laughs> that's. Um, So you're 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 really just placing down these these tiny lines and and where where the 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 highlights are from the blue cloak mm -hmm. you're just you're making them slightly stronger yeah okay but it's still the same same mix that you've got yeah just a bit thicker on the, on the brush. it's it's interesting you mentioned that actually yesterday at uh, at Ben's apartment when he was showing me some stuff. Um, I, I, I've always had this like uh, almost like a mantra drilled into my head you must thin your paints you must thin your paints and and when trying to do these very tiny details I, I out of habit try and thin it too much and Ben's like too thin too thin it's, it's not going to work too thin yeah especially when you do uh, details like that it's if you're too thin, you cannot really control where, where the paint is going or you just have to right. hit the same spot a million times to have like a nice strong strong effect there. Mm -hmm. um, so you really want to try to, to keep the paints um, in a consistency where you can actually just, if you try it here, for example, on, on that piece, to just like draw a, draw a line. Right. And if that works, it's it's actually a good consistency check to to then go to back to the figure and try to paint. And that them. that can be just a general tip anyway. Is like when when you if you have your figure mounted to have what you've mounted it on primed a little bit because then pretty much like for any part of the figure you can check the consistency of the paint before you before you put it on. Yeah, not only the consistency, also the the color of it really works or. If, Color combination. You can just try that on the on the on the base actually, and just don't try everything on the figure. And that's that's a, a good exercise as well for the for the loaded brush. Mm -hmm. uh, something Ben did with me yesterday was was sat and before we actually attacked a figure, we we sat down and he was showing me how to to do wet blending and and the loaded brush and it it was practicing on on a on a flat surface, which you you were saying is. Pretty much the hardest thing to do when doing a wet blend. I'm not like the it, hardest, but it's yeah, pretty yeah. tough in comparison to, to a soft, to a to a texture. Um, so if so, if you can do it on a flat surface, you you can do it on say like a cloak or or a shoulder pad or something. Yeah, the the main reason why it's a, a lot more difficult is actually because you don't have uh, any natural border. Like in the ministry, you always have borders where you can pull the pigments and just oh right get, yes. get rid of that. But on the surface, you just have to work. Yeah, pretty precise with the color. <clears throat> so this is the bit I was going to ask you. This this looks like a tougher part of where you would where you would put those lights. Yeah, I think I would just take the like this main spot here on the shoulder. If you could 
turn that very slightly to the can oh, to make sure it picks yeah. it up just because that, that, that really <laughs> is in the way it's yeah. it's it's one of those tough things because I know I know how, how hard it is for you to paint and make sure that that, it, that everyone can always see what you're doing yeah and especially with areas like that that is sometimes really a little bit tricky so you're still it's still um, sideways to follow as if it was the stitching but but just that slight angle to as if it's slightly distorted mm -hmm. but right Oops, it's a bit too thick. So just with slightly darker color. Even the pros make mistakes, ladies and gentlemen. <clears throat> it's it's a rare thing. It's like the unicorn. Um, you're not going to see it often, but when it does, it, it's a magical moment. Ah, I got it. Got it on cam. <laughs> okay, make sure Mike, we keep this in the editor. That could be an interesting, um, an interesting video to to go through all the edits. Just find those tiny little, those tiny little moments, and just have a montage. See Titans fall. <laughs> <laughs> So now I'm uh, having just a little bit um, brighter color to to get the highlights here on the on the top. Also, just to do like tiny little dots here where I didn't re actually make any proper lines. Um, just try to pretend that there are just lines, and you just painting like little light reflexes on the top of, the, of those. Right. Okay, it looks already quite interesting, but um get in more depth and also to to get it matching a little bit more with the with the cloak we will use some tank brown for the shadows <gasps> and a little bit of black is that the that's the same mix that you used for the cloak the tank brown with a little bit of black or did you use pure you use I pure, used tank, pure tank brown, pure tank brown. Uh, so so why are you mixing the tiny bit of black in as opposed um, to just using the pure tank brown because i now want to create like darker lines in the in the very shadow okay and then i will glaze over them with a bit of tank brown oh i see so you okay right so i'm actually now adding dark lines here in the in the shadow areas would you say that paint is slightly thinner than than the um, the highlight one. Than the highlight color. Yeah. yeah. And that's because you don't want it to be too too stark a contrast, right? You don't want it to have like these, these hardcore black lines, basically, just going through it. Yeah. Okay. Amazing the difference that that little step just made. Yeah, because it's also because we've introduced another color to just the highlighted right. uh, one color actually, or more our base color because that was just like the the only color in there was the Japanese uniform and right. a bit of black and white. So once we add a red, also the yellow will look stronger because you have just that contrast on a small area. Mm. As I said, the, the next step will be a glaze of pure tank brown, but again, very thin. And we try to place it just in the shadow area. Oops, glaze a bit over the, the mid tone here. Something that I that I had like like uh, what I call like a click moment uh, yesterday when you when you were showing me some stuff, um, especially with the um, with the loaded brush, it's it's really crucial like how much paint you actually 
put on the brush, not not to overload it, mm-hmm. to really make sure you get the consistencies right. Well, I think once you once you get that down, it it's not as intimidating as, as it can as some people can think it is. Because I've always thought with like with blending, it's like this this masterful art, and it's I mean, it, and it is, but it, it's not as scary as I think. Uh, I y- thought it was. Yeah, yeah, especially in the first moment when you try it and you you're not used to the consistency and right the way you actually have to lift the brush and all these fine little details that you mm-hmm. will discover when you spend like at least ten hours with the the technique. Um, you 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 said that to me right. I remember the, the one of the first things that we said when we first met. I was talking about asked you about the lead brush and you were like, it's it's really just practice. Like on it, but about yeah. if you really put the work in about ten hours and and you can get it down. I think depending on on your, your how long you've been painting before, for right. example, because okay. you know if you do that for fifteen years, you're so used to right. do it in your way. Uh, it might be taking you twenty hours, but I think if you finish uh, a showcase model, just trying to use the loaded brush technique after that, it should be like in your. I think it's a very good point to mention wh- where you are in your painting because when when we first sat down, Ben immediately went into the loaded brush, and I just kind of sat there like, oh, 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 oh. it was it was like just brain overload. And he, he said to me, "If if you've done wet on wet blending before, nope." <laughs> right, let's let's start there first. So I think something like the the cloak, the cloak uh, mm-hmm. chapter. I think maybe like a really good place to start to get the the concepts down. Yeah. Um, and and then, and then to jump in the loaded brush. Yeah, it's very nice to see also how that works on a larger surface to actually understand what right. you're doing. Of course. Uh, at this stage now, I'm just glazing over with a very light yellow tone to make the highlights look a bit softer, so it's not that obvious that we just highlighted with lines. Right. And where you're where you're placing the glaze is like in between, just just covering the 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 line where you've got the glaze from the tank brown and the the mid color. Yeah. Plus here on the on the very highlight to also have the dark lines that we see through here from the our first base layer, they also get just a little bit brighter, so it looks uh, like matching the the level of highlight. Okay, and. Because yeah, I don't want it to, to turn out too bright another go with the, the tank brown. Sure. And at this stage, because you're you're using glazes, it's it's quite easy to to, to adjust that contrast. Yeah. lovely gold colors on the palette I will also just uh, highlight those wings here it's nice to to just add a little bit of color here that's why we'll do um, two of them in and some golden color and one in, in metal it's nice as well to actually notice them um, you know, I'm not saying me, but maybe there are other people out there that, that were looking at this and hadn't actually noticed that there were rings in that cloak. <laughs> yeah, it's it's funny because the the front is so detailed and you turn it around and like, well, n- not a lot is happening. So mm-hmm. um, it's really important to also pick out these little details. I, I do think there's enough detail on the front to cover both sides, though. I, th- I think that, that, you know, <laughs> that there's enough detail. Even doing loaded brush on there, you crazy man. It's really amazing the brush control you have to do that. Kind of a darker color, especially here to the side to not too too bright. And with the um, dark sea blue with a bit of white. Mm-hmm. 
Not bad at all. Not bad at all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I think the the uh, the color contrast is really nice. Um, the last thing I will do for for the cloak is just getting this here a little bit brighter because it's just here to the front. It looks a bit a bit dull. Okay. There's some. No. So you're just going back now to this part, and you're you're just doing essentially the same process again over. Yeah. Just to make just, it such brighter. Yeah, yeah. Because here the the upper part should be quite bright actually. Right. Yeah, you're right. It does. It makes the difference having that extra that extra bright part now. Yeah, especially together with the skull, you need something mm. like bright also because we have the bright skull here, so it's. It's nice to have like two elements of rather the same brightness on there, especially when you think of it being like a uh, made from gold strings. Right. So that would reflect quite heavily, actually. So yeah. Um, so yeah, that's it for the cloak, and um, we'll be back to show you uh, in a little chapter how we would uh, paint an element like that, like possessed metal. So we have like the, the skull coming out of the metal and super excited about this one. All right, see you with the next chapter.